Behind the Scenes Hockey. Introduction. Getting that first Stanley Cup. When Alexander Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals made it to the National Hockey League Championship Series in 2018, they faced a tough opponent in the Vegas Golden Knights. Ovechkin had played with the Capitals for more than 12 years. He would do anything to help his team win this best of seven series and take home the Stanley Cup. Las Vegas won game one at home but the Capitals stormed back to win the next three games. At game five, Washington was just one win away from the championship. The Golden Knights were hoping to keep their season alive. Ovechkin had other ideas. He got the puck on his stick in the second period. He fired a shot into the back of the net. Goal. That helped Washington take a two to one lead. The game came down to the final few minutes. Ovechkin was giving his all to help the Capitals win. He fell to the ice to block any Vegas shot he could with his body. With less than a second remaining, the Golden Knights won a face-off near the Washington goal. Vegas forward Eric Halla fired a shot to the net, but Washington defender Brooks Orpik stopped the puck. The clock read zero. The game was over. The Capitals were the 2018 Stanley Cup champions. Ovechkin skated to his team's goal to celebrate. He soon held the trophy over his head proudly. He had worked hard to get to the, that championship moment. There is so much more to being a successful hockey player than what happens on the ice. Hard work behind the scenes makes the difference. Chapter 1. Climbing the Ranks most professional hockey players start at an early age. Organized youth hockey leagues often begin when players are five or six years old. These young players work on skating. They also practice basic hockey skills such as holding the stick and shooting the puck. Youth hockey leagues get more competitive as the players get older. Players start traveling to other cities for games and tournaments at about 10 years old. Some teams travel long distances. A team from Minnesota might travel hundreds of miles to Canada for a tournament. The standard youth hockey season is in winter, but players who really want to improve their game often play almost year round with spring and summer leagues. Many kids play high school hockey. The sport is especially popular in Minnesota. However, Top players from other states often play junior hockey instead. Those leagues are for players age 16 to 20. They are often more competitive than local high school leagues. Players might have to move away from home to play junior hockey. After high school, some top players move on to college hockey teams. Others stay with their junior teams. When players turn 18, they are eligible for the NHL draft. When a player is selected by an NHL team, he can choose to continue playing at the college or junior level. Some top players go straight to the NHL. Austin Matthews of the Toronto Maple Leafs did that in 2016. Women can also play college hockey after high school. If they are good enough, they may also play with the U.S. national team. They do this outside of college hockey season. The top players continue playing with the Team USA after college. They also might play professionally in the NWHL. Players cannot be drafted by an NWHL team until after their junior year of college. They cannot play in the NWHL until they have played four years in college. A day in the life. On game day, most professional hockey players plan their schedules ahead of time. This allows them to stay focused on the game. The plan starts in the morning with breakfast. Players might eat foods such as fruit or mixed nuts to feel energized. These foods contain vitamins and minerals that can help players get back some of the energy they might have lost during a game or practice. Players head to the rink to participate in a morning skate. 
they work on different plays. Sometimes coaches show players different strategies to use in that night's game. When the morning skate is over, players head back to the locker room. All players change into street clothes. The top players are often interviewed at their lockers by media reporters. Others continue changing and talking with teammates and coaches. Soon, it's time for a nap at home or at their hotel. Players feel refreshed when they wake up and they head back to the arena. Many players are superstitious about game days. This affects how they get ready for the games. Some players put on their equipment the exact same way before each game. Retired NHL great Wayne Gretzky used to drink beverages in a certain order. He would drink Diet Coke, ice water, Gatorade, and then another Diet Coke. Once players are ready, they skate around again to warm up. Soon the announcer introduces the starters for the game and someone performs the national anthem. After that, it's time to drop the puck. Players skate in short shifts. When they are on the bench, they talk strategy with their coaches and teammates. They're also catching their breath. They drink water or sports drinks. At the end of the game, the winning team's players skate over to their goalie to celebrate. If it's an important win, there's a lot of hugging and cheering. Players then shake hands with the opposing team. Then it's back to the locker room. Players shower and eat a post-game snack. Reporters return to the locker room to ask about the game. Reporters may want to talk to the player who scored the game-winning goal. If it's a home game, players head home afterward. If they're on the road, they'll go to a hotel or they might get straight on a plane for their next stop since games usually take place a few days apart. It's soon time to start preparing for the next game. Staying on top. Even when not on the ice, hockey players are often still working. They practice their skills. They work to stay healthy and in shape. This training on off days can be just as important as working right before the game. Diet is one important thing players think about off the ice. Players often eat lean meats and vegetables. They want to fuel their bodies with healthy food. Some players, including Alexander Overskin, prefer grain foods such as pasta. Hockey players also have to think about recovering from games. Their bodies take a beating when they play. This can include bruises or strains. There are different ways players try to feel better. They may spend time in hot or cold water. Some players try acupuncture to ease their pain. During games, players try to be as safe as possible. They use the most advanced equipment, such as special helmet padding, that can help prevent concussions. Coaches are also teaching players to be safer when checking one another to cut down on the number of injuries. When the season ends, players take some time off. But about a month or two before the season begins, players start skating regularly again. The closer players get to the season, the more on ice work they do. Players who live in the same area during the summer might get together to play informal pickup games. This allows players to have fun while also practicing and staying in shape. Chapter four, off ice impressions. Professional hockey players put time and effort into building relationships with their fans. Many professional athletes give back to their communities. Teams often send their players to hospitals to visit sick patients. Players also participate in charity events. This work helps the athletes become more popular, but more importantly, it helps the community. Hockey players are also very passionate about getting more people to play the sport. They often help youth teams and teams for people with disabilities. Brock Bozer of the Vancouver Canucks has supported Minnesota Special Hockey, a program for players who have special needs. Olympic gold medalist Jocelyn Lemaru Davidson and Monique Lemaru Morando have donated thousands of dollars so girls can afford equipment to play hockey. Outside of helping the community, players might spend time in and off season 
traveling around the world. Some appear on TV or at events such as the ESPYs. This helps increase their public image. Many players also interact with fans on social media, such as Twitter and Instagram. Hillary Knight of the U.S. Women's National Team posts pictures on Instagram when she travels or when she's hanging out with her teammates. As the sport of hockey continues to change, players will always be looking for ways to improve. The sport is growing, which means the competition is getting tougher. Players have to keep working on and off the ice so that one day they can become champions. Your turn. Most top players never stop trying to improve their hockey skills. They work on the shooting, skating, and other skills that are needed to be successful at hockey. Young players want to practice many of these same skills. One way for young players to work on their skating is by playing freeze tag. First, get a group of friends together, put on skates and hit the ice. One player is it at the start of the game. The player chases the others and tries to tag someone. Once a player is tagged, she must freeze until someone who isn't it comes by to unfreeze her. This is a great way for players to work on their speed along with starting and stopping quickly on the skates. If a player is alone, he can practice speed and stick handling with a stick, a puck, and a few cones. Use about eight cones and set them in a straight line from one end of the ice to the other. Skate around each cone while using the stick to hold on to the puck. Go down the line of cones and try to keep the puck on the stick the entire time. Behind the scenes, hockey.